So before we get started, just want to say thanks to all of you for coming out tonight. I know everyone's time is valuable, so we do appreciate you being here. I also want to extend special thanks to Innovate Calgary and New Tech Meetup for having us present tonight. So we have put together a little presentation for you, but before we get too deep into it, um, I just want to show you, oh sorry, I've got to put it up on the screen here. I just want to give you an example of what we do for some context so you kind of know what we're talking about while we're going through this. So this is an example of a roto. And we'll get to why and how we do this further in the presentation. So who is Roto Image? So Roto Image is comprised of our core team here in Calgary, of myself, Kevin. We have Rick here in the front row. Rick's a serial entrepreneur and has a wealth of knowledge in the virtual reality realm. He's probably going to be floating around here afterwards, so feel free to track him down. He'll be able to answer any questions for you. And we also have Jeremy, who's going to give you some history of Roto Image. Right. <coughs> okay, so. We founded the company back in 2011. Um, basically, we were over in Europe. We ended up talking with a few engineers, uh, European engineers, that were looking to develop 360 three-dimensional product photography equipment. We were really, really interested in that. They were also looking into developing uh, technology for reverse engineering and scanning applications. So you take an object and you put it back into a... Somebody's looking at our video right now. <laughs> on our website, yeah, you can hear it. Um, so developing technology for reverse engineering, taking an object, putting it back into a CAD format um, for, 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 uh, for digital logging, for product uh, replication, or for manipulation. So that was the original intent. Um, basically, we started working on equipment. Uh, we developed, we ended up founding the company not as Roto Image, but as Image 360 3D originally. Um, there's a bit of a story to why we changed our name, but we eventually did. So Image 360 3D was founded in 2011. Uh, we launched January at the Consumer Electronics Show in North America. Um, basically, it was a wonderful show for us. We knew we were on the right track. Uh, we ended up winning innovation awards at CES. Uh, it was a really, really wonderful opportunity. It showed us we were moving in the right direction. We ended up rebranding to Roto Image in 2014. The reason we ended up doing that was we started realizing how difficult the search, and demo, search engine optimization was for, uh, for a name like Image 363D. How do you spell that? Um, are there numbers in there? So basically what we did was we changed to our, our company to Roto Image or at least Roto Image doing business through Image 360 3D. Um, it allowed us to brand our product. All of these 360 three-dimensional product presentations are actually Rotos. We call them Rotos. We've been calling them Rotos for a couple years now, and that's the way that people are starting to understand them. And then just in 2015, we started a studio here in Calgary. Um, basically, we were manufacturing the equipment, we were selling the equipment, providing the equipment to companies with, um, with a number of products to present to their e-commerce uh, companies. It's basically online, they're selling products, they're selling electronics, they're selling jewelry, uh, being able to present these in a way that you can actually experience the product instead of just seeing a two-dimensional image. Um, so we found that we were running into clients that are at trade shows that didn't have enough products to warrant purchasing a piece of equipment. Hence, a studio was born. So we started shooting the products for people um, on a smaller scale, and we've even stepped into doing it on a larger scale uh, just because of the experience and technical know-how that our team has. This is a map that sort of shows where we are. We're a little bit all over the place. We manufacture most of our, our equipment in uh, Poland and Austria. We have joint manufacturing over here in North America as well. Um, we have a, uh, a showroom down in Anaheim for all of our Silicon Valley friends and all of our American friends. And then we operate our company out of here in, in Calgary, Alberta. 
So, marketing has been all over the place. Um, as a young company that is trying to present something that is new, we ran into a lot of difficulties that we didn't really expect right off the bat. Presenting something that your your um, your buyer doesn't necessarily know even exists or that they need it yet is difficult to do without a ton of money. So we started showing ourselves at um, at shows such as Consumer Electronics Show, uh, IRCE, which is an internet really well, so just branching off into the educational platforms, um, into e-commerce platforms, uh, sort of just branching out all over the place. We were trying to see where our target market really was. We've continued to do the trade shows every single year. That's where the majority of our client basis comes from. And then on top of that, we started doing a lot of optimization. We started working with um, social networking and, and all of the online applications as well, uh, outsourcing, trying to figure out where we can grab clients without actually having to meet them face to face because the expenses occurred in that. Um, yeah, and then we, yeah. Yeah, so that's basically what we've been doing for marketing. Um, word of mouth has been wonderful for us and a huge component to capturing our, our business, um, capturing new clients. Uh, we try to treat our clients as well as possible and, um, and it definitely has paid off. And then Kevin is going to tell you a little bit more about our target markets. So who needs Rotos and why do they need Rotos? So our target market has been primarily e-commerce and we've been dabbling a lot in education as well. So for e-commerce, as you can see from the infographic, there's a host of reasons of why someone would benefit from using Rotos, particularly on their websites. Um, one of them primarily being is that there's an interaction between the customer, the potential customer, and then the actual product. So they get that connection there that makes more affiliation with your brand and your company. Um, another benefit of using the Rotos is that you actually know what you're going to buy before you buy it. Um, so this definitely reduces the return rates on products. And another huge, huge benefit of using Rotos is it boosts your company's SEO dramatically. So instead of an individual standing there or looking at one or two pictures for one or two seconds, people on average are interacting with Rotos for 10 to 15 seconds. So Google likes this. The longer someone's on a page and actually using your page, boosts your SEO dramatically. So I have another example here, a couple more rotos. And this is the fish bracelet that you see here. Uh, Jeremy touched on a few of the markets that we focus on within e-commerce. Jewelry is one of the big ones. Um, fashion, so apparel, shoes, accessories, those are also big ones. Um, and electronics, basically the main things that you see sold online. It's especially good for things like jewelry and electronics because those are more big ticket items. If someone's going to drop five to ten grand on something fancy, they're probably going to want to know what it is before they do that. Um, I'm a huge proponent of Rotos, to be honest, because <laughs> I'm your typical guy. I hate shopping. I only go grocery shopping. I buy everything online. And then I'm sure you guys maybe run into this. Maybe one or two glasses of wine too many or something online and it shows up at your doorstep and it's not anything what you thought it was. So Rotos has definitely helped with like that. So another market that we've kind of stumbled upon was for educational purposes. So these are organizations both for profit and not for profit. So Rotos are a great way to educate um, your end consumer, but they're also a great way to educate any internal stakeholders that you might have. So it's particularly good for universities, for medical, um, and any industrial applications, we've seen a lot of attraction for it. And I'll show you why. So beyond just doing the 360, three, this is a three axis roto here. We actually do these things called hotspots. So this is an example of a dynamic hotspot. So if your product interacts in any way, shape, or form in real life, we can mimic that digitally. So this is a huge benefit because everyone else is having just pictures online and it's hard to explain what you're selling if someone can't actually see it. And this is huge for salespeople as well because if they're not selling a thousand SKUs, 
they either have to go to a warehouse or go through blueprints and specs to see what each product they're selling. So this is a good way to teach internal customers along with the consumers what your product can actually do. So beyond just the dynamic hotspots that I show you, we can also add info hotspots. So for instance, we can add those in a polygon or as a point. So if someone hovers over the hood of the car, a whole spec sheet can pull out to the side and it'll tell you all the specs that you want to include in there. So you could just say it's made out of carbon fiber. If you wanted to hover over the tire, you could say inflate to 32 PSI or whatever you want in there. So we've seen a lot of people, we've done recently a lot of oil and gas companies for connections, they want all their specifications on there because now they don't have to go to a client with 10 pages of these pretty poor looking rendered things. They can actually just show one roto, bring a tablet, and rotos work even better on a tablet or an iPhone than on your computer because you get even more interaction with it. it makes it feel like as close as you can get to actually having the product in front of you. Alright, so that's who and why we do rotos. And I think we're going to show you just a quick demo here if everything goes according to plan. Yeah. So we just got this new system in literally this week, so cross your fingers, hopefully it works. Um, we have a variety of different systems. So this would be our photo table mini. We also have another desktop system, which is a compact. It's kind of cool looking. So all these systems, we have some brochures I think we left at the back, or you can check them out on our website. Um, it has all the information on there. And then we have a bigger one, which is the same version as this. And that's primarily what we use to shoot a lot of the products. It seems to fit, let's say, 80% of things, because if you think about it, people are selling product online. It's usually small enough to ship, otherwise shipping kind of gets a little crazy. But we do specialize in making some larger systems. We have a, a classic system and a classic mega, which will fit basically a couch. And then we also have a fashion system we're getting a lot of attention from uh, Europeans for having fashions because you can put the model in there as we showed it right on the start. So the beauty of the system is they're all automated through your computer so once you have it set up it does all of the magic for you. So each of those rotos that you've seen are comprised of individual stills. So when we're doing a roto the smoother you want it the more pictures we take. The more angles you want, the more pictures we take. And then at the end, our software meshes them all into one roto. But when we're taking those pictures, we can also um, use those as stills. So if a company wants those stills for brochures, for anything else, we have that as well. Because you don't have to double pay for a photographer to do any of your equipment here. So basically what we've done, we've set up to shoot 24 pictures in columns here, and then we designate how many rows we're actually going to shoot as well. So a row being the actual angle of this axis here. So you can see that not only will your turntable spin and is centerless, you're actually going to be able to ride up over top of the object. And if you want to grab the other side of the object, you can simply flip the object over and merge those two together. So you get a full immersive presentation. It feels like you actually have the product in your hand. Um, for time's sake, we're just going to shoot 24 pictures really quickly. So we have that all set up. I'm just going to touch the camera here really quick. And while we talk, we can start creating a roto. <laughs> so, we have set up 24 pictures on a 360 basis. The rotating turntable is going to turn. Um, there's 24 stops programmed right now, but that's completely programmable. Uh, very, very simply. And then the camera is going to fire every time that the product stops. Um, nice thing about what we're doing here, yes, we can very, very easily use it for photography. The other application is for scanning. So, if anyone is familiar with scanning, um, or if anyone has done any scanning, it's very, very difficult. Quite often you're running into handheld scanners, there's a lot of margin of error um, 
for for doing something like that. Mm -hmm. You have these overlays that you have to merge all together after it's a whole mm -hmm. lot of cleanup. So this creates a perfect environment mm -hmm. to be able to do that and stack the scans on top of each other or to stack mm -hmm. the images on top of each other. So whether it be through process mm -hmm. of photogrammetry or through uh, different types of laser mm -hmm. scanners, um, our system works really, really well with that. So you can see the percentage mm -hmm. of the process completed for mm -hmm. image capture. And I'm just going to walk through this to show you how easy it is. Um, mm -hmm. There's an internal uh, editing capabilities mm -hmm. in the software as well. So we'll just walk through and make one quick roto. Mm -hmm. OK, so we're going to close that out. We have all of our images captured. I'm going to process the images. And I keep on forgetting that this is popping up on my screen here. OK, so to process, we're going to end up cropping, changing our levels, sharpening, doing a mask, and then something that's really, really actually uh, unique to our product is we're going to de-wobble, and I'll show you what that is. We actually never really centered that object. Um, the problem with 360 pr product photography is that if you don't center an object perfectly with lasers, is it's going to sort of warp and wobble. So we didn't even try to center it. You'll see that it's not actually centered, and we're going to fix that in the software post. So we'll step through here. Make sure that we're completely in the frame. And that isn't overly important right now, because we'll come back and do that. Just change our levels a little bit. Come through, you can sharpen, and then if you have a um, a website with a different colored background. There's a blend from the white into the website. So uh, that's basically what this parameter is. And then if we come into D-Wobble, this is what I was talking about. So we create an anchor image. Anchor image will be zero. Oh, yes. And you'll see the opposite image. So basically what we've taken is image 0 and image 12. We're overlaying them, and we're actually going to line them up. <coughs> to our best capabilities right now. <coughs> so that looks all right. And then our offset minor, we're basically going to take image number 6 and image number 18 and do the exact same thing. do it perfectly, but this will give us an understanding of what we're trying to accomplish. So we'll go back to our crop, make sure that we have this centered, and then we hit close. We just edited 24 pictures, like that. We get an opportunity to take a look at this, make sure that it actually is centered, and it looks great. So creating the files themselves, a lot of capabilities here. I won't go through everything. We'll enable a zoom. We'll uh, enable a, a taskbar, a simple taskbar. Um, we will go into our advanced settings. We didn't put any hotspots in, so we can disable that. Multi-resolution, this is something really, really interesting. I'm not going to do it right now, but basically what we do is we split all of the images up. <coughs> Um, instead of having 24 images, we're actually going to split it up into thousands of little tiny pixel images so that when we load that online, uh, the, the previous history, if you've ever seen these on a website, you end up, you're going to end up seeing a load bar that pulls it across your screen. Um, what the multi-resolution does is it eliminates that process because we're only ever pulling up the individual images inside of an image at any given point in time. So they load instantaneously as opposed to having to wait for that. So we'll want to make this responsive. That full screen button basically just allowed us to be able to view on any device, whether it's a uh, smartphone, a tablet. If you shrink it down, uh, it's going to pull up to a, a full screen, as opposed to having to <coughs> scroll around and wheel around in there. So 
So we'll create this. And the nice thing about what we're doing, realistically, we shoot the quality of what we're doing um, as high quality as we can shoot with a individual camera. So if you're taking a still, it's like we talk about the experience of 4K video. I mean, the majority of, of cameras you're going to shoot by like 5,000 by 4,500 megapixels anyway. So you're already shooting at a higher quality than you would with even 4K video. So we can pull that up online, view it from all different angles, zoom in, and that's ready to go up online. So that's an HTML5 file, really, really easily embedded in an iframe on a website. Um, nobody's had any issues loading these online. And then I'm going to pull this out here. Kevin's going to talk about some of the special products that we've done. All right, okay. Okay, so this is a few examples of a few of the products that we've done. We've actually worked um, closely with Agriculture Canada. They came to us with a project. Um, they had a bit of a problem. They wanted to not only do capture full hemispherical's of insects, they wanted to stack those images and make sure that they were perfect images and then step into reverse engineering these tiny little insects. Um, so we built a system for that. This is what we built for a prototype system. Essentially this angle, at this axle bracket here, um, the, the turntable itself is actually only right there for this little guy. He stands up on a, on a stick, on a pin, and the, the turntable will actually rotate, and then the L bracket will drive as well, so that we can capture above and below the insect. Um, we had an issue with guitars. How on earth are we going to create really, really high quality images of guitars? So we ended up taking what every guitar has, that, um, that the, the guitar strap casing on the top, and we're suspending the guitars uh, and being able to capture the images that way. Uh, we had a unique project with golf clubs, how to do this, so we ended up clamping them close. So what we're basically saying is we don't necessarily have a specific set of, uh, of systems. What's diversified us a lot is that our clients will come to us and they'll say, hey, we need something like this, what are we going to do? And we have a, a really, really wonderful group of engineers that um, have worked with us to, to build really interesting projects and do things that we haven't really seen yet. Uh, and then up in the corner, you can see a system. Uh, we, we build these systems large for cars as well. So that's essentially a car system that's turned for caskets. So the company wanted a, a system to be able to shoot cap caskets, large 360s of caskets, and then a smaller system to be able to shoot urns and stuff as well. So we, we get all sorts of projects. <laughs> Morbid stuff here. Uh, what's next? So, road image is, I guess you'd say, in the virtual reality market. So, I'll give you kind of a quick snapshot of what that market is and then where we think it's going to go and kind of what we're going to do to try to stay on the front of the wave a bit. So, there's three types of virtual reality. One of them is Windows on World, and that's kind of what we're showing you today. So, it's a 3D object on a 2D screen, so it's a desktop, iPad, anything really. And so that's our biggest target market right now because everyone seems to have a screen. But virtual reality is obviously progressing at a rapid rate and it's a very interesting industry to be in. So one of the next big ones is immersive technology and that can kind of be split into two major components. One of them is semi-immersive, so it's an example of a Microsoft HoloLens and it projects a hologram so a virtual image onto um, a real life, like say a table or a floor. So it's semi-immersive. And then the ones you've probably heard of more are your Oculus Rift, which is full immersion. Someone wears a full on headset and the headphones, and then it blocks out all of the real world and they're completely into the virtual world. So this is gonna change the way that basically entertainment and media are going to happen. Uh, not for much longer, you're probably not going to have to drive to a movie theater to watch a movie. You're going to just put on your Oculus Rift set. Instead of having your movie screen in front of you, you can basically watch movies two or three times because you'll be able to turn around and it's going to show you something different. 
So it's kind of exciting. We've already started developing movies like that, and we have as well. And then the third type of virtual reality that's kind of not talked about as much is telepresence. So that's someone manipulating the virtual reality realm to get a result in the real world. So an example of this, you probably heard something crazy on the news where there's like a physician in Germany doing a surgery on someone in England. So they're using a computer virtual reality program to manipulate something in real life. So pre 3D printing could also fall into this. And let's like, say aerial drones for military could also fall in these applications. So what does this mean to RotoImage? Well, like I said, we're already on the windows to the world. But for all of these programs, people need content. So the software developers, the app developers, the, the app developers and the program developers, they all need content. And if you're a developer, you know how hard and expensive and time consuming it is to build everything from scratch. So instead of having to do that, you can take real life objects, which are already there, throw them in our system, and it's done. So it saves tons of time, effort, and money on that front. So some of the directions that we're heading right now, kind of doing them all at once. We seem to just scattershot most things and see what works. Um, one of them is panoramic. So you guys have probably seen examples of that. Show you a quick one. So instead of the roto, which is 3D imaging facing inwards, this is a pano, which is what we call it, which is 3D imaging facing outwards. And this is like what I told you our movies are going to start looking like. Um, so we've been doing that for real estate agents, for developers. Um, and we've also been working with our software to try to get our lightest patch up, which should be up and running pretty soon, to embed rotos into panos. So you can kind of see the direction we're going with that. We're trying to make basically virtual stores where you can literally like pick your favorite store, whether it's Golf Town or Lululemon or something. You could walk through as if it was a real storefront online, look around, and then pick our product off the shelf and you could spin it, see all the specs. So for someone like me, you don't have to get off your couch to buy anything anymore. Um, Jeremy kind of touched on the scanning market. We're not going to go too in depth with it because scanning is an entire market on its own. Uh, we're just trying to see where we fit in personally because it's huge. So we don't know if we want to focus completely yet on B2C or B2B or focus on the high-end industrial stuff. Because, like Jeremy said, our systems here are perfect for a photography environment, but you just switch out the camera, switch out the backgrounds, and you have a perfect scanning environment. And that turntable can turn, what, it's like one out of 112,000 turns in one. So it has one in over 100,000 stops per turn. So the accuracy you can get, it's gonna take a while, but the accuracy you can get is pretty dramatic, down to the micron level. That's an example of one of the wireframes that we've produced from scan. So you can use this in any CAD file, manipulate it, change it, and then you can either send it to your manufacturer or you can 3D print. And kind of last thing that we've been working on, uh, we've had a lot of requests from clients for is, yeah, like we have a lot of different systems that'll roto anything you need, but a lot of clients have a lot of different products and they want basically a one-stop shop to do them all. So we've been developing, tweaking, getting all the parts in place just to get one modular system so you can do anything big and small. We say bugs to buildings, so you can literally do a bug up to a building with these. And the benefit of that, easier to ship, easier to set up, and you don't have to deal with a bunch of different systems. So that's all we got for you today. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, you can find us on all the social media, our website, our emails, and yeah, we'll probably stick around. We definitely want to see another presentation. We'll stick around for a bit. And if you guys have any questions, you just want to chat, contact us at any time. Yeah, maybe you could share with the audience uh, what have you learned since you guys have become entrepreneurs that maybe you didn't expect or advice you would share with uh, other aspiring entrepreneurs. Right. We had a lot. Um, you go first, I'll go second. <laughs> uh, don't be afraid to launch. 
uh, literally will sell things that we don't even know we can do yet. Um, <laughs> it's a big thing. It is a big, big thing. And as long as you're confident that you can get it done in the time and make your client happy, then you're doing everyone a good service. So that's one of the things that, especially coming to these events, everyone always says, oh, I don't have my prototype yet. I don't have anything yet. We were selling things before we even had them a lot of times. We still do. And we still do. <laughs> <laughs> um, any other ones like yeah. that? Uh, yeah, to be completely honest, like uh, going through university, I didn't learn like, <laughs> <laughs> compared so to what you end up learning um, trying to start a company, whether it be sales or uh, learning your budgets or learning your marketing techniques. Like we've gone shotgun effect on so many things. Um, it will, I'm really excited for future. Kevin, Jeremy, and Rick, because I think that we have made a lot of mistakes and we've learned a lot of things. Um, and I, I just think that there's a, a wealth of knowledge that comes from just stepping in and getting your hands really dirty uh, and not being afraid to go out there and try to make sales. That's the biggest thing about, or biggest component to a company is making sure that you can turn a dollar, turn revenue, because if it's not there, then it's a hobby, it's, it's not a company. Um, so being able to present yourself to being able to actually try to grasp clients, uh, figuring out what your markets are looking for, um, and actually trying to acquire those. And like Kevin said, we've come to a few of these events and we've talked to a lot of people and don't be afraid to, to present what you have as you have it and try to move that. If you're always trying to perfect your products before you sell it, it's never, you're, you're never going to have a perfect product. It's impossible. You won't have a perfect product. So provide what you have to the uh, to the customers that you do have, to the environment that you do have, and, and adapt accordingly, obviously, and make sure that you continue to progress and, and make sure that you continue to develop products, develop yourselves, but yeah, definitely don't be afraid to, to go out there and uh, knock on a few doors and get turned down a lot and try to grow from that. Great. Other questions? Yep. Yes. You haven't mentioned anything about pricing. Pricing? Yeah. Like, can people, are you a product company or a service company? We're both. So we started the studio uh, just this past, well, last year in 2015. So actually doing a fulfillment service for people. Um, prior to that, we, are, we have been exclusively a uh, product and software company. So we, we manufacture the equipment. Um, we provide software and equipment packages to our customers to be able to, to create rotos and load these HTML5 files or video files or whatever they want to comprise of on their websites themselves. What's the price range for the uh, How much do you have? And how, <laughs> many, how many do you want? <laughs> uh, price range. We, that's a hard question to answer. Um, this, It's, it's definitely drastic. Um, from our systems, from, uh, from our compacts, uh, we run anywhere from 10 upwards to 60, $65,000. Yeah. And the yeah. beauty of it is we're selling American, so we definitely got a good uptick from that right now. Yeah. Primarily, most of our sales are in the States. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of one of the benefits of us trying to present here too. We want to make more Canadian presence and markets are tough here. Canadians have a tough time competing with Americans so hopefully if you can use our technology in any way, we do the fulfillment that's kind of priced on a per project basis. Sometimes like this one took a couple minutes to do. We literally took three hours to do one of them before so mm -hmm. the pricing's all over the map. We kind of just need to know what you're doing. The tough thing about fulfillment is not every product will shoot the same. There are very, very difficult products to shoot. Uh, any photographer is going to know that. Anybody who's trying to scan something is going to know that. Um, basically reflective, refractive, anything that pulls the environment into the object is difficult to do. Uh, anything that's transparent is difficult to do. As you can see, our table is transparent. It doesn't even show up on the screen. So we have to use a number of, of techniques that we've had to develop and learn. Um, to be able to shoot hard, harder products like that. You talked about the benefit to somebody, the user of it. Um, has it improved productivity in the studio for a visual? So we had, if you were shooting photos of the product already, mm -hmm. do you see productivity increase in the studio or is it more of a drag? For 
Studio Studio itself? Well, it depends. Like you're talking about the time that it takes to yeah. shoot something. Yeah. Well, you saw how long it took me to shoot this product. Um, it's not the easiest product to shoot. It is reflective. It is shiny. Um, that's sort of why I wanted to present the the demonstration to you. Was we we edited all of the images together. Um, very simply, uh, I uh, honestly, if it depends on the product that we're trying to shoot, first off, but I, I don't see any slowdown. I, I see a lot of photographers that will set up and shoot and take 20 minutes to shoot one product. Yeah. So the beauty is on the back end. A lot of product photographers, they'll have to go in and Photoshop after the fact. And this is a perfect environment every single time. So there is no Photoshopping or no touch up unless someone wants to remove a cord from their product or add a label onto it, we can do that. So that's where you save your time. Mm -hmm. So there is a product in game for the photographer itself. There's yes. definitely a product And you don't really need a photographer anymore. Like kind of once you figure it out, you can yeah. take that guy's salary in there. <laughs> <laughs> and in the next one. Exactly. Um, yes, I saw a hand right here. What are you shooting with? What are we shooting with? This, uh, the nice thing about our software, you're going to be able to shoot with any um, any camera. You'll be able to shoot with Canons, Nikons, Hasselblad, Sony's, whatever you're willing, whatever you're looking to shoot with. Shooting with a Canon 6D right now, with a 105 Sigma lens. And so it's the, the software. So if I was to purchase an actual system. Yes. Uh, to, to the interconnectivity, I mean, you literally just take it on and off. Like, yeah. how does it? Yeah, exactly. We're connected with a USB mini into the computer, and then we're connected with a USB cable into the turntable drive system as well. So there's a computer drive system in the system that will actually turn the table, uh, and they correspond through the software. How many other people or organizations are in that space right now, and what do you feel your competitive advantage is on them? There are a couple people in this space. Uh, there's a company called Snap36 um, out of Chicago. There's a company called Ordery out of California. To be honest, everybody else is these little rinky-dink turntable systems that you see on eBay a lot. Um, our two main competitors, actually there are other people, but for the most part it's the same equipment with a different name in Europe or a different name in Korea. So it's, we pretty much only have two other competitors as far as that's concerned. Um, our systems are priced exponentially lower uh, and we've, our, so our systems are priced a whole lot lower uh, and I mean uh, 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 exponentially lower. When we talk about the Snap36 systems, we're looking at $100,000 for a smaller system um, and up, like they get pricey. The ordery systems we've heard don't necessarily have amazing customer service, um, but that's hearsay, so I don't really want to go down that avenue. Um, I think the big thing is customization. Customization would be biggest, yeah. So nobody else in the industry actually has stepped in and done what we do here. Actually, um, Agriculture Canada, when we ended up building that system for them, um, they actually came to us first, and then they had to put a, because it's a government project, they had to put a bid out to uh, everybody. So everybody in the space had to bid on it and nobody would even touch us. So that's why we ended up working with the government there. So that's probably the biggest thing. And then us, we work night and day. Um, we're on the phone instantaneously. If we talk to any of our customers, they're all so keen to give us phenomenal reviews. Most people who buy it will fly down and set it up, teach them how to do it. So just, yeah, customer service is key. So another, I guess, lesson learned from certain companies is yeah. Just go out of your way. If you make the customer happy, they're gonna tell all their friends, and then they're gonna you're gonna get more business. Mm -hmm. So you might have to bend over backwards the first couple of times, but it's worth it in the long run. Any one more question? Yeah, absolutely. Nice. Yes. How did you get funding to start your business, or how did how did that work for you? So that's the best part. And honestly, we didn't want funding. Um, we are self-funded. So self, completely self-funded. We didn't want anybody else's hands in it. That's why we have the modularity that we have. Um, it would have been easier to progress quicker. It would have been a whole lot easier in the early stages. Uh, we wouldn't have been as hungry or thin. Um, but I'm very, very glad that we did things the way that we did. Um, and we have definitely learned how to do things on a budget, which I think not everybody does that gets a certain amount of funding. So um, I wouldn't have done anything different. Great. Thank you very much.